dressings, bandages. What's that about? The dressings, bandages, where did I put them? Forget it. Bandages won't do him any good. What? Oh, but he, he breathed still a moment ago. Mm-hmm. Breathed his last then. Bled to death. Legs broken. Femoral arteries ruptured. Wound like that, you're dead in minutes. Gods. What happened here exactly? I... I was rolling through, fully loaded, when I heard screams. This one crawled towards the road, then drooped to the ground, lost consciousness. I jumped down to help him, dress his wounds. Then you appeared. Pretty admirable stopping to help a stranger. Truthfully, when I saw him, I considered it might be an ambush. The thought entered my mind, I near decided to crack the whip. But to abandon a man in need? It's simply not the decent thing to do. Decent enough in many other places, believe me. Before you go on, clean your hands thoroughly and burn your shirt. Might also want to rub some time on your body to be sure. The smell of blood might attract ghouls otherwise. Who? Who might you be, precisely? A witcher. Oh. Uh, 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 do, do you expect some beast might have killed him? See what we have here. Legs broken, but cause of death's the wound. Small but deep, edges unfrayed. Either a thrust weapon or a thick claw. Maybe a wyvern's. Tough to say, and... Mm, breastplate's unusual. Dented. It's got a patina. An antiquity, I believe. I deal in these things, so... Uh, what's puzzling is... Why did he do it? Not likely to learn that from him. Now to figure out where he came from. From that house, I'm assuming, but need to investigate. Got some work to do. So... So long. Wait! I will come with you! Hmm, so be it. But stay close, keep it down, and don't touch a thing. He tried to crawl away, though he was heavily wounded. Something horrifying must have been after him. Trail leads to the house on the hill. Which stands silent as a grave. Must have been here he broke his legs. Fell while climbing over the wall. Trying to leave the property probably, after he didn't manage to open the gate. Gates locked from the inside. Clearly been jostled, though. Something tried to get out. <sighs> the very thought sends a cold wind down my back. Damn it. Good gods! Servant. Stabbed to death. Over a dozen blows with a sharp object. Some post-mortem. I cannot believe this is the work of a man. It was a monster, to be sure. Torso punctured with great force. Blow pierced hardened steel. Man on the high road. Breastplate was identical. Throats massacred. One mighty blow. Shield along sides old and dented. Swords ceremonial, and Shea handiwork clearly. Burn marks. Something catch fire? Explode? Strong stench. Ceremonial bowls? For little sacrifices? Of what? Please, do not say humans. Multiple wounds on the body. All puncture wounds, but hard to tell what caused them. Victim's human, but the attire's elven. Are you certain? How did he come by it? 
with so few non-humans in Tucson. Fled, then dropped to the ground to douse the flames. Didn't manage. Burnt smells growing fainter. Might have been another luckier soul managed to flee. Doublet scorched. Wriggled out of it, tossed it, then ran on. Perhaps there's no one inside after... I know you're in there. Breathing's loud and clear. <coughs> Open up. We mean you no harm. They... They remain there? Listen, I'm a witcher. I'm here to help you. But if that's gonna happen, you gotta answer some questions first. Who are you exactly? D Durant Fosher Plamonton de Safaran, Lord of these lands, and Chairman of the Society of Friends of the History of Tuton. We meet here annually to mark the anniversary of the Elfin Homage, but something like this by the first. You mentioned them. Who do you mean? Those... I, I don't know what they were. Spirits. It all occurred of a sudden. We were staging a scene. The, the, the death of paying homage. There was a flash of light that blinded me completely. I heard cries. Those saw nothing. Then felt my own robes were in flames. I broke and ran, threw off my doublet, leapt in here and it shut and locked the door behind me. They pounded on the door. I, I, I thought they would get through. I, I thought I was done for, but but in the end, it, uh, it grew calm. Hmm. So while reenacting a scene from the past, somehow, unintentionally, you summoned a specter, a Korgorath, or a tube, maybe. What? What now? Best thing? You gotta do it again, of course. Are you mad? Would you have this thing kill us? No, don't want it to kill anyone. Precisely why I gotta do my job. Summon it again, whatever it is, and tend to it once and for all. Durand, think I can reenact the pledge? The giving of homage, alone? It was a great, momentous event. The surrender of Tucson's last elf and king. You will need at least... Three individuals. You know what I'm gonna ask for. Need your help. But I'll understand if you turn me down. No objections? Good. Let's get to work. Start by clearing the corpses. Got some time. Won't start the reenactment before nightfall. Things of this sort are a lot more likely to work after dusk. One last thing, though. My pay. Don't work for free, you know. Understood. Just keep the danger at bay, and I shall be generous. Through and through. I will stand, or rather, sit in for King Ludovic upon the Elfin Throne, while you, Witcher, will play the and Shay Ruler. We must don the costumes. All must be just right. The Vethef, the Elven King, hosted Ludovic in his own palace upon his own throne, amidst the blinding glow of a plethora of torches. Ludovic's feet, a loaf of binnen, and elfin bread, thus granting humans rule over seat-yielding lands. The Vetha filled the 
or make ceremonial bowls with elven wine. Gwinoet, the sweetest blood of the land that had been torn from him. Long last, the elfin king grasped his sword and shield, thus symbolically passing command of his armies to humans. and dropped to his knees. Lutofik then spake. I accept your allegiance and shall return in one year's time to... Ah! Look! Look! The statues! Impossible! God's mother! Not your last day. Sculptures, they came alive. By what witchcraft? Dunno, specialize in killing monsters. Reviving them, not so much. I... I may know what happened. The statues, you see, once stood in the palace of one Defethov. I acquired them a month past because uh, perhaps I should start at the beginning. This Devethev was to pay tribute to humans, producing statues of this sort each year. Yet he did so but once, for he perished in the massacre of non-humans at the foot of Mount Gorgon in the year 782. It's fortunate he did too, as Devethev had planned Lutovic's downfall, for he sculpted not statues, but columns that masqueraded as such. Columns activated with words said in homage. Columns that would have turned the king and his bodyguards into so much colorful confetti. Typical treachery embodied elves. Pshh. Beasts dead, path awaits. High time I was on my way. Hold, master. Please, take this. A safe journey to you, witcher. sense that the spoons are beating out some kind of rhythm, a message, trying to tell me something. None shall sit and dine with you at your table. No spoon you have shall say to you. Never again shall you wish to spy your reflection in the mirror. Sounds like a curse, all right. Somebody's clearly obsessed. Regis mentioned the place might be cursed. Can't be a coincidence. Need to look around. Pigsty. Need to search it thoroughly. Find a way to collect some white saliva. Poor girl. 
realized she was changing into a monster, recorded it in her diary. Poignant. Smashed mirror. As if someone couldn't stand to look at themselves. The monster. Journal's author, maybe? spoon you have shall say to you. Whatever lives here treated that literally, still searching for the right spoon. Skeletons. Doubt they came here willingly. This have anything to do with the curse? None shall sit and dine with you at your table. It'd make sense. Right arm bit right off. Teeth all knocked out. Somebody tried to force feed him. Broken neck, indentation in the skull's lateral surface, smacked in the head with something heavy. No claw or fang marks, probably choked to death. Actually does seem like a white's lair, bit atypical, but still. Cauldron should be somewhere around here. White's obsessed, a real collector, thoroughbred. For. Why it's not particularly tidy. Table's set. White who lives here is getting ready for some sort of feast. White that lives here, definitely afflicted by a curse, and it's been trying desperately to lift it. Cauldron's empty, unfortunately. We just need some brew. I'm afraid he won't get that. No choice but to hide and wait for the saliva glands and their bearer. Need a spot that'll let me observe the cauldron. Spoon. Pretty ordinary. Maybe a little old. gonna hurt you. Wanna help? I've seen the words of the curse on the walls. Think I know how to lift it. to bring folk here, convince them to sit at the table with you, right? Well, I'm gonna be your guest now. Your willing guest.
just need a bit for Regis. And now we'll tend to you. We can't use spoons. No, that won't work. You've been looking for a spoon that would feed you, but there's no such spoon. We need to eat without spoons. stench. safe. So I took her by the hand and led her here. Seemed the only sensible place for her. You did the right thing, sir. She should recover quickly here. Don't worry, sir. I shall see to everything. She is safe here and in good hands. She'll soon be back on her feet. Might actually take a while. She hadn't eaten anything in over a hundred years when I found her. Horrid. Whatever brought this about? Told me her story on the way here. Her name's Marlena. She was once the very beautiful and proud heiress to the Trastamara estate. One evening, when she was holding a banquet for friends, a beggar came to her gate seeking alms. He had a bowl and a spoon with him. He sat outside her fence and waited. I've heard of the custom. An ancient rite of hospitality that obliges one to give food and drink to such a guest lest he depart hungry. To neglect the custom is to bring great misfortune down upon oneself. Marlena didn't care a whit for the old customs. She drove the man off, saying she'd rather feed the leftovers from her feast to her dogs than to give the beggar anything. The beggar then broke his spoon, cast a curse. She was beautiful, so he said she'd never wish to look at herself in the mirror again. Since she adored feasts, he swore no one would ever wish to sit and dine with her. And as she even refused him the crumbs from her table, he swore she'd never find a spoon in the world that would sate her hunger. A harsh punishment. I imagine lifting the curse was hardly simple. Curses are tricky. They play on irony. Always gotta figure out what the catch is. Marlena had spent decades looking for a way to lift it. Transformed into a white, she stole spoons and lured folk into her home, trying each time to get them to dine with her. Didn't work. So what did? Someone had to sit down and share a meal with her, of their own free will. They had to eat without using spoons and make her look at her reflection. That's it? That was all it required? Simplest solutions are sometimes the last that come to mind. Besides, when you're a white, it's pretty damn hard to find willing human company for a feast. I imagine so. But, most importantly, it is now over. Please, don't worry. She will be in good hands here. Thanks. Gotta get back to my business now. See you soon. Think your friend's hand will make for a nice broth? Hmm. You've clearly honed your sense of humor. 
But we are not cannibals, Geralt. I took a fragment of tissue from the hand. It will suffice to prepare some resonance. What did you do with the rest? I cremated it, as our Codex commands. A raven told me you'd acquired the necessary ingredient. Pretty helpful creatures, calling them often. I try not to overdo it, but they can be so useful. As they were now, when I merely needed to be sure, I could arrive in time should things go sour. Managed fine alone, but thanks for the thought. Gonna need much longer to finish brewing resonance? Mentioned the last ingredient, too. What about that? That, I fear, might prove troublesome. You see, to use the concoction to summon the memories of one, the solution must contain the blood of another specimen of the same species. Shouldn't be a problem. I happen to know a higher vampire who should be willing to help. Right, Regis? It's not that simple, I'm afraid. While you were away, I tried my damnedest to identify a replacement, but, alas, none such exists. Not sure I understand what the problem is. Can't we just draw some of your blood? The blood must be in an agitated state. As I'm certain you know, higher vampires can change their corporeal shell. As our flesh changes, so does our blood's chemical composition. To make a long story short, I shall need to induce in myself a state of strong psychokinetic arousal. In brief, madness, rabidity. And that stands to be very, very dangerous. Dangerous? Why? I mean, you'll still be you, right? True. But I should be highly agitated, in a state of fury. You know better than I that fury cannot be controlled. If you've ever seen an enraged vampire, you know very well that all who find themselves nearby will be in grave danger. How will we handle that? I'd rather not have you lunge at me, claws extended. That makes two of us. But worry not. I've thought it through very thoroughly. Details to follow soon. All right. So what do you want to do? We shall visit Tesha Mudna, an ancient vampire estate. There we will find cages suspended in the air. I will enter one, be confined. You will lure beasts there. Beasts you will then kill. The bloodletting should prove profuse. Abundant enough so that the blood scent will drive me mad. Wild. Tesha Mudna. What's it like? It is a place of torment. A torture chamber. Long ago, shortly after we'd arrived in this world, one among us named Kagmar developed such a taste and lust for human blood that in one night he could imbibe an entire village. This brought trouble on the entire species. Common folk wearied quickly of living in constant fear. They began to hunt us, seek the aid of mages and witches in tracking us down. So what? Not like they could ever hope to kill you. But they were bothersome. Forgive the comparison, but when did you last enjoy mosquitoes buzzing around your head? In any case, the other vampires decided something had to be done. Kagmar had to be caught and punished. A torture chamber was thus outfitted in the dungeons of Teshem Mutna. Inside it, a cage made entirely of a special alloy of silver, dalvinite, and meteorite steel. Kagmar was captured and locked in the cage, sat there over two centuries, driven to fury time after time, never able to escape. Thus I know the cage will withstand the fury to which we shall drive my humble being. See no reason to dawdle. Tesham Mutna. Take me there. In a moment. Just one last thing. What was that? Uh, blood. Oh, the last favor the raven did me. I've also taken some Sangurium, a solution that sharpens one's sense of smell. One drop of blood shall smell like a gallant to me now. You crazy? You're a recovering addict. <sighs> Your outrage warms my heart, Geralt. But you must remain calm. I have no choice. As things stand, the die is cast. <sighs> High time we set off for Tesh and Mutna. My head's... Spinning already, and you're... you're starting to smell quite tasty. And you're starting to scare me.
We have arrived. The sacrificial chamber of torture and torment lies underground. You lead. Scurvers must be getting close to their feeding ground. Correct. I told you there'd be danger. <sighs> Beyond this wall lies... An ancient vampire dungeon. Seen a lot of things in my time. Nothing quite like this, though. My, I feel honored. A man with such a wealth of experience, yet I'm about to show him something new. Now, to open it. How the hell? It's an ancient form of protection against unwanted guests. The mechanism which releases the latch reacts only to a higher vampire's body. Tricky mechanisms, the vampire hideout. Fortified, secured. Must have been important to your species once. It shall always be so. During the conjunction, the gate from our world into this one opened upon this land and no other. This was the first place we saw. Many beings have breathed their last here. I'd rather not summon the demons of the past if it's all right with you. Charming place. But what are all those cages for? Mentioned one vampire being kept here. Yes, well... You see, humanitarians is something my ancestors were not. They concluded Kagmar would best be punished if he were tormented with the scent of blood he could not taste. Thus, they also kept humans here. Humans whose blood they slowly let. Kagmar ranted and raged in pain as those... those humans slowly bled to death. They treated them like livestock. Live bait. I'd like to be able to turn back time. Deny it, but alas, I can do neither. Feel shame for my brethren. That is all I can do. Don't take it so hard. Nothing you could have done about it. Let's get to work. Well, that was awkward. Fine. I prepared the bait. Please be so kind and place it. Ideally at the tunnel entrances. The scent will spread most effectively then. Place the bait at the tunnel entrances. Monsters will catch its scent more quickly. When I think how these tunnels got here, scent shivers. It was the natural order of things. A place reeked of death and it attracted necrophages.
Three done. One left. Think this'll work? I certainly hope so. The meat stench is so thick, I wager it carries clear to Novigrad. Bait set. What now? I shall enter the cage. You must chain me inside. The bars are made of an alloy that will prevent me from transforming into mist. Kinda thought you wouldn't want to. I shall be in great pain. My sole thought being to stop that pain. I cannot know what I will do. We must hurry. The beasts have caught the scent also my head. I started spinning. Is that the blood? Uh, someone who's never experienced a vampire's bloodlust does not know the true meaning of thirst. Take it anymore. And what should we do once I uttered it? Don't know. I have to calm it down. Somehow. Mm -hmm. I just smell the blood. it in this state. Tell me how. I'll help you. Any better? Far from ideal. And some time must pass before I fully recover. But yes, a bit better. Thank you. expected it to be like that. You didn't tell me. We need not discuss it. But we do. Because if I'd known you were going to subject yourself to torture... What would you have done? Found Deadlaugh some other way. I did not wish you to use any other way. Did that occur to you? No. Because I thought no being would ever willingly subject itself to that kind of pain. You vampires aren't any different from us in that regard. I told you. The pain is my way of paying my debt. The enormous debt I owe Detlaf. If I had to do it again, I would in a heartbeat. 
Resonance. It's ready. Are you certain you followed the formula? The proportions were exact, the brewing time precise. This is important, Geralt. The slightest deviation could cost even a witcher dearly. Relax. Got some experience brewing potions. Very well. In that case, let's begin. Excuse me. I shall only take a moment. You jump the queue, sir. But Count, sir, you must understand. I have a meeting. The Count... Sir, you were next. Please, take a seat. This gentleman was here first. Step down or you shall regret it. Ah, <laughs> fails to realize he was your friend, Count. It was then I ordered him to give up his seat and step off the stand. If only you'd seen his face. We got him good, didn't we, Detlav? And then Mother insisted we buy the mill. <laughs> Curious, eh? At least I've a yarn to spin for friends and associates. Forgive me. What? Awake at last, you ride like a squirrel caught in a snare. I'd begun to fear they were death throes, that you'd departed. <clears throat> uh, uh, sure wasn't pleasant, but it worked. What did you see? Delacroix. His death did not come easy. Seems Dedlaff had made friends with him, still killed him, and chopped up his corpse. And he was overcome with fury, remorse, cut off the hand that had committed the murder. Hmm, interesting. And entirely unlike the Detlef I know. See anything else? Saw a moment. Delacroix did something selfless, was kind to Detlef. Guess it could have been the start of their friendship. Why the uncertainty? Nothing extraordinary about it. Normal, everyday situation, really. Visions were supposed to issue from strong emotions. Clearly, the situation provoked such emotions in Detlaf. Keep in mind, he did later murder Delacroix. 
Killing someone who's grown dear to us, it's bound to elicit strong emotion. Vampires are no different in that regard. Did you see anything else? There was something. Showed up twice in the vision. A boot black stand. Dedlow first met Delacroix there. Went back after the murder, actually. Peculiar. Stand was somewhere in the port district. And the boot black acted as if he knew Dedloff. Hmm. That would be even odder. Perhaps we should have a chat with the lad. Though I would expect no breakthroughs. It's our only lead. I'll go talk to him. Coming with. I shall join you later if it's no trouble. I don't yet feel strong enough to venture out. That's fair. Rest up. Be back as soon as I learn anything. You little fuck! So how would you explain it? Whether it pours for a week or the sun bakes our pates, we've always mud up to our ankles here. You can't blame me for Beauclair's fickle weather. Fickle weather? I've seen you. You empty your chamber pot in front of our shop each morning, so folks will dirty their boots, go to you to get them cleaned. A far-fetched conspiracy theory, sirs. I'll conspire to welt your bum with my belt. Come here! Leave him alone. Just who the spit are you? A witcher. And I'd advise you to go back where you came from. I thought witches defend men from monsters, not cheats from justice. Need to talk to the boy. You can chat to him all you like. After we tan his hide. So stand down. Not gonna happen. Won't it? Well, then we'll thrash you as well, which is all the same to me. My goodness! We'll you break your learn. legs! Fight! Teach you to help smoke! What's the meaning of this? The brawl? Who started it? I'm investigating the beast, on the Duchess's orders. Ah, yes. We've heard of you. And these men. What are they doing? Obstructing my investigation. Understood. Right. A few days in the clink ought to teach them not to impede official Dutchy business. Come on. You're very good with your fists, sir. Wouldn't be looking for work, would you? We'd make a fine duo. Yeah? How you imagine that working? Splendidly. That's how. I suggest a partnership, where I see to the boots while you stand guard. And as you're the stronger, come morn you take the chamber pot out and help me make mud. Bit about the mud's true. They were right to want to box your ears. I've got to make a living somehow, so what say you, sir? Partners? Let me think about it. Listen, I'm interested in a certain gentleman. Oh, wait, wait! Before we get to talking, please, take a seat. But my boots are clean. In this city, no boots are clean unless they just come off my stamp. A seat, sir, please. So then, who was it you wanted to ask about? One of your patrons. Tall, elegant black frock, not from around here. An arrival? Hmm, indeed. I hear a faint bell ringing. A modest sum might make it sing out loud and clear. How much? Let's say... 500 crowns. What? Gotta be kidding me. What would you even do with that kind of coin? Expand my venture. I'm sure you can imagine. Have a proper stand, with a big sign. I want a new box, too. New polishes, new brushes. And, if I've enough coin left, I'll buy a share in a launderer's. Get wastewater for free. Hmm. Got it all planned out. 
I should think so. Capital is all I require. All right. Let's see if we can't figure something out. Ah, see? I knew we'd clinch it. Fine. Guess I can agree to that. A thousand thanks. I shan't forget it. Now to the matter at hand. I know the fellow you seek, though I don't know his name. A steady patron. Gets his boots cleaned every few days. He's very good to me. Always pays me a premium. Know where I might find him? No. But you could wait here. Perhaps he'll stop by. Don't have the time for that. Sure you don't know where to find him? Or maybe notice which direction he came from? When I clean boots, sir, I do not look up to see where folk come from. I clean. It seems you're having a rough go of it. Oh, you're here. Feeling better? I am, thank you. The local necropolis. The air does wonders for me. Now, if I might intercede, I dare say I've the right question to ask. Young man, you see this vial? One drop added to your boot polish will help you wipe even the most encrusted boot clean as the dome of St. Lebioda's Cathedral. With it, you will serve three times as many patrons at a fraction of the effort, and piles more coin. I'm prepared to give you this vial, if you tell me where the man we seek lives. Uh, but you won't hurt him, will you? The gentleman's art, true, but he's kind. In point of fact, he's a friend. Yet we had a falling out of sorts and would like to straighten matters out. I leave his boots at the door of a house near the port. The door is red. But I do not know if the gentleman lives there. Worth checking. Might happen on a lead. Would you let me scrape the dirt off your kickers before you go? With all due respect, sirs, your boots could stand a cleaning. Thank you. Perhaps later. <laughs> Handled that kid pretty well. Finding the right approach. That's the trick to dealing with children. Mm, yeah, saw that. Meaning, the right thing to bribe them with. Red door. One that Boot Black mentioned. You might just as well stand out in the street, pound on a drum and holler, Detlaf, I'm coming for you. A bit more finesse, I implore you. Let's hear your idea. Give me a moment. Nice. Ever consider becoming a burglar? Skill like that would come in awful handy. I considered it briefly, but ultimately concluded it would be terribly dull. Come. still strong. Let's look around. sometime.
Attic. Let's go. So this is his nest. Need to look around. Woman's likeness. Bit smudged. Is his lover? I don't rightly know. Reminds me of someone. Who? Not sure. Can't help feeling I've seen that face before, though. Nice tune. Indeed. I'm not certain why, but it reminds me of home. Our true home from before the conjunction of spheres. Tools were used recently. Dedloff unwind by fixing toys between murders. Really now, Geralt, must you? Look, slips of paper, name on each. Count Crespi, Count Dulac, Milton de Peyrac Peyron, Count de Lacroix. Detloff's victims, one and all. But that's not his hand. All of it written using the same ink. See the color? Ink was dyed with cinnabarite. Rare mineral, pretty much found only in... Nazaire. But I fear it means very little. Anyone could have imported such ink. Fair enough. Still worth remembering. Look, this slip is stained. With wine. Not much to go on either, especially not in Beauclair. Perhaps. Yet perhaps also worth remembering. Still got nothing, basically. Need to look around some more. Let's get to work. Detloff van der Eretain. You do not know us, but we know you to be a vampire. We know also of your weakness for the wench they call Renoued. Now you know this. We shall chain her down and let rats feed on her. We shall flay the skin from her flesh. Yet you can save her. You need but travel to Beauclair, where you shall slay five men in the manner we prescribe. You must complete the killing in three days. Fail, and the next letter you receive will contain a memento of your failure, your beloved's finger. There you have it. Proof positive Detlov killed not of his own accord. A blackmailer sunk his claws into him. Any idea what it could be? Detlov have any enemies? Indeed. Detlov gains foes occasionally, but they never live long. One might have managed to evade him. Possible in theory, but I know of none. It would have to be someone devilishly dangerous. As you well know, having faced Detlov yourself, whoever it is, it is someone new. Who's Renoued? His one-time lover. The sole human woman with whom he was very close. Because she accepted him. With her aid and care, he found a place for himself in this hostile world. She began the work that I strive to continue. Ever meet her? Never had the pleasure, alas. She deserted him a time before he came around to save me though he always claimed she'd gone missing. Take it you have your doubts. I know humans better than he does. Their capacity to be disloyal, dishonest. I also know she took her things. Not something one associates with the kidnapped, or those who disappear against their will. I'll save you the trouble of asking. No, I don't know why she left. I can, however, hazard a guess that Detlaf grew angry one day, showed another, more monstrous side, Detlaf's anger could frighten anyone off, though most who see it get no chance to flee. Detlaf have trouble letting go, accepting that she'd left him? Is that so hard to believe? Do you know no humans who've struggled with just such a thing? And Detlaf is so much more emotional than most humans. Not only was she his beloved, his lover, his mate, she was a member of his pack. And one never leaves one's pack voluntarily. Detloff ever try to find her? I mean, if she was that important. Higher vampires have their ways, all kinds. Should have been easy as pie for him. Geralt, as you rightly noted, we are vampires, not miracle workers. He searched, for months on end before giving up. 
Clearly, Renewed knew him all too well. Enough to cover her tracks, leave no way for him to find her. Even if Renewed did abandon him that time, looks like someone's actually kidnapped her this time. Hard to argue with that. And hard to foresee what he's prepared to do to free her, get her back. He's prepared to kill, that's clear. As would you be for Yennefer. He kills, for he cares for her deeply. And that blood, those individuals, they mean nothing to him. Yeah, I get it now. He's out to rescue a female from his pack. Exactly. Blackmailer. Kinda curious who it could be. Why is that? Regis. Somebody kidnapped a vampire's lover. Bold to begin with. Now they're forcing the vampire to kill. A vampire you yourself insisted no murderer. Blackmailer's skilled. Someone special. Hmm. Astute. Now that I think of it, I'm beginning to wonder if... It's not one of your kind? Another vampire? Precisely. The plot thickens. Just a hypothesis. Wouldn't set my heart on it till we know more. Right you are. Let's sum up what we know. Seems Deadlaugh's being blackmailed. Someone's been feeding him his victims' names. All noted down using one and the same Nazari ink. And not in his handwriting. Not much. But enough to ascertain Deadlaugh's innocence, clearly. Actually it is. Deadlaugh's being manipulated. Some lunatics turned him into a tool, making him kill. So it would seem. But this illuminates a path of action for us. We must find Renowed, render the blackmail senseless. The lunatic or ticks will thus lose hold on Detlaf. That's one idea. Hmm, could be worth a shot. But what about Detlaf? He gonna go on killing while I'm out searching for his lover? He will not. I shall convince him to stay his hand. Assure him you're a friend seeking to help. I'll await him here. He's sure to return sooner or later. Think he'll listen? He will. I'd await with you, maybe. No, he'll sense you from a mile off. Simply fail to appear. I'd better stay alone. You must trust me on this. Fine. Need to report to the Duchess first. So be it. We'll await you here. Detlaf and I both. <laughs>